Welcome back to The Code Wolf. Today's video is a simple introduction for how to set up and connect your apps to local offline AI models. That's right, the entire AI model just runs on your own computer, no internet connection required. I think local AI models are a hugely underrated and under-discussed tool for the AI ecosystem, so I'll definitely be creating more content about this topic. Local AI models can actually be more efficient and easier to use than cloud AI in certain scenarios. I'll discuss more of these benefits at the end of the video, so we can just jump right in here and start the demo. So first we'll install and run an AI model locally, and then see how to connect to that model using a couple of coding examples. This whole setup is much simpler than you might expect, so let's jump in and see how it works. Please remember to hit subscribe to support the channel and stay up to date with the latest coding, AI, and cloud content. I also want to thank all of the existing subscribers and give a huge shout out to the response from my latest video. Uh, this build recap from the Microsoft conference received almost 10K views, and the goal was to hit 2,500 subscribers on that video, and people really came through and smashed that goal, and we got all the way up to almost 3,000 subscribers, so it would be great to hit that milestone, and thanks again so much for all of your support. All right, so for this video, we're gonna be using a tool called Olama, which is a really popular option for running AI models locally on your computer and other tasks. So if you go out to Google and just search for Olama, there it is. So you'll click on that first link and that'll take you to this download page. This is a really simple website. It's also a very simple tool and easy to use. So just click this download button and install that for your OS of choice. While that's downloading, I encourage you to look around this site a little bit. So a lot of the documentation for this is actually just out on GitHub. Um, it's kind of set up as a readme. So if you scroll down here, you can kind of read through uh, different commands and information about the models. And speaking of the models, you can also read more about those on the site. So Olama lets you run different models just like we would have in the cloud. So in the cloud, we might have different GPT models and embedding models. And a lot of that type of thing is available here um, in this list of local models that we can run with Olama. So if we were to look at the most popular ones, um, you can see that the Llama models are really popular, and there's Code Llama. So this is a local model that can be used to generate text prompts and code tasks. Uh, we're going to be using the Phi3 or PHI3 models, uh, and this comes in a few different SKUs, but it's a state-of-the-art open model by Microsoft. It's very powerful relative to its size. So after you've downloaded and installed Olama, you can just use the Olama command to make sure that that's working and set up on your computer. And this will also give you a list of the common commands that you can use. As you can see, this is a really simple tool. And so we have things like run, so we can run a model and we can pull a model from a registry. We can list models that are on our computer or running models. We can do all kinds of things here. So let's start by actually getting a model for us to use on our local computer. So for that, we'll wanna use this pull action. So we can say Olama pull, and remember, we're gonna be using the Phi3 medium model. So it's gonna pull that down for us. And this can take quite a while, depending on uh, which model you pick. I've already downloaded this, so it just kind of completed automatically, but these models can range in size quite a bit. So to give you an idea of what this means, if we look at this documentation page, you can see it lists some common models and their sizes. And the size of the model is essentially determined by the number of parameters and training data that comes with it. So for example, the mini model here has 3.8 billion parameters and it's 2.3 gigabytes, whereas the medium model is 14 billion parameters and is almost eight gigabytes. And this just impacts how much it's able to do and what sort of ta uh, tasks it's able to accomplish. But in many cases, you'd be surprised how powerful these tiny models are. We're just gonna stick with medium for this video, but if you're trying to save space, you can certainly just use the mini model uh, instead. So feel free to look around and uh, investigate which models might be suitable for the tasks you're trying to accomplish. So the next thing we wanna do is actually run a model. So we have this run command. And so if we go down here, we can say olama run, and then we pass in the model name. So that's gonna be that 
by three medium that we pulled down and you can see it's thinking and it's gonna start up that AI model for us right here locally on our computer. And you can see it now says send a message so we can talk to our AI. And I'll just say something like, who are you? And you can see right away we get a fast response here because there's no lag. This is just running right on our computer. It's not going out to the cloud or anything like that. And these models can do a wide variety of things with surprising accuracy. So I could say something like, write me a story about a wolf who writes code or software development. Uh, just something silly to start with here, but you can see it automatically responds really quickly. And it's kind of writing us this whole story, just like we would see on a chat GPT or something. But this is all running right here on our computer and it's going pretty quickly. So now that we have our local AI model running successfully, let's see how to connect to it through code and custom apps. For this example, we'll use a very simple semantic kernel setup, but you don't need to know anything about semantic kernel to follow along. Semantic kernel is an open source SDK that makes it easy to interact with different AI models, and it's available as a package for various languages. I'll post a video about how to work with semantic kernel in more depth very soon, but for now, let's just get connected to our local AI using a basic configuration. Okay, so first we're gonna look at what I think is the simplest possible setup to connect an app to uh, your local AI model that's running with Olama. So I've created this really basic .NET console app. And to set this up, you'll wanna to go to your NuGet packages and make sure that you install the Microsoft.semantic kernel NuGet package. So just browse for that and install the latest version of that. That's the only package you'll need. Remember I said this is just sort of an open SDK that can help us with connecting to different AI models. So back in our program.cs file, there's basically three steps here. The first step is to actually build and configure that semantic kernel object. So we have our kernel.createBuilder, and then here we're adding an open AI chat completion. So this will register and configure a necessary service for us to talk to our running AI model. And to do that, we have to pass in the name of our model or the ID. And remember that was phi3 medium that we ran in our uh, console. And we don't need an API key since we're just here locally with no real security on this. And our endpoint will just be this default localhost endpoint for um, our Olama model, which will be localhost with this port number here. So that's what you need to set up your kernel. And then you can use that kernel to get a chat completion service. And this is the service that will actually talk to our model. So we have our AI model represented here um, through our chat service. And down here, we just have a simple loop to actually talk to the AI. So we just write out um, what our question is and read that from the user. And then when we send that to our AI model, we call the get streaming chat message contents async method. It's kind of verbose, but that gives us this async uh, feedback from the AI model. So we just kind of write those messages out as they come in async. And that's really all there is to it. This almost sort of just recreates what we already saw where we talked to the model uh, through its own terminal, but we've kind of created a custom app to do that. But of course you could start to expand this further, which we'll look at in just a second, but I just wanna demo this working here. So if I were to run this app, uh, let's see what happens here. And so when the app starts, here's our console and it prompts us with your question, just like we set it up to do. And so I can say this time, write me a poem about a wolf who writes code. And this is immediately gonna start uh, responding with this nice poem from our local AI model. So again, this is kind of recreating what we had before, but it's interesting to just see all of this working locally where both our app and our AI are just talking back and forth to each other. Okay, so I also want to demonstrate a more in-depth or real-world scenario that you could use a model like this for. So if you follow my channel, you might remember this app that we worked on in a previous video where you can type in a natural language query and the AI will convert it to SQL in order to query a database. So I have a a local customer sample database with some orders and products and customers and all that kind of stuff. And if we ask a question like, which customers live in Germany? So when the results come back, you can see that it pulled customers out of the database and all of them live in the country Germany. 
Now, in that original app, we used the powerful GPT-4 model to perform those conversions for us between the natural language and the SQL, but I've actually set this up to work with a local AI model, and it's actually powerful enough to accomplish that exact same task all locally right here on our machine, which means that we also wouldn't be charged for these queries. So in this case, I'm actually using the code llama model. So if we look at our uh, Olama terminal here, I've actually just pulled um, a new model here called code llama. And I just wanna give you an example of another type of model you could use. So this model is specifically designed to convert text into code. And that could be text into C sharp or Python. In this case, I'm using it for SQL and it actually does a really good job. So the way this app works is that we just send this large prompt to the AI model and I've provided it with the schema or structure of the database. So it doesn't have access to the data or anything like that, but it does understand the tables and the columns and the overall schema of the database. And then we tell it to only respond with SQL. So to give you a better idea of what's going on here, uh, if we were to run this query again, you can see that we get our response back. And if we expand this and we look at the content here, you can see that it's actually writing a SQL query for us. So it understood our natural language and it created a SQL uh, response back for us. And so when we hit continue, sure enough, there's our same results again. Uh, I think this is hugely impressive. This is just a small local model on our computer that's really performing about as well as GPT-4 did with some of these queries. Now, I haven't thoroughly tested this with uh, some more advanced queries and kind of compared the results one-to-one. -one. I didn't go into that amount of depth with it, but it is impressive that we can get kind of this similar functionality out of a very small model. This one's only a few gigabytes. So I mentioned earlier how there's these different models. I encourage you to kind of pull some of these down and try different tasks with them. This project is available on GitHub, at least the original version. Um, so you go ahead and pull that down and you can kind of plug in your own semantic kernel here uh, to get this working. So again, local AI models can be very powerful. We've successfully set up a local AI and connected to it through code, but you might still be wondering why you would opt into this approach in the first place instead of using a readily available cloud service like Azure OpenAI and their GPT models. Well, there's a few reasons actually. For starters, local AI models are generally free. So if you're able to use the model to accomplish your goals by self-hosting or running it locally, you'll save some money. Local AI models can also outperform cloud options for various tasks since there is no lag over the internet and they're often fine-tuned and optimized for certain tasks. Local AI models also offer security benefits because the AI can analyze your data or interact with your different services without going over the public internet or through a cloud provider. So I encourage you to check out the different local AI models that are available, play around with their functionality, and figure out if a local setup might solve some of your tasks without the overhead of a cloud service. Thanks so much for watching, and remember to subscribe for more follow-up content just like this.